Welcome to the channel Naturally Care and Cure. As a diabetic or a healthy person but who is concerned about diabetes, you may have heard so many things regarding what to, how to, and when to eat, but ever fully being explained the reasons behind them. One of the things you may have heard is, you should eat low glycemic food, but again what do you mean by glycemic index, and where to find such index of food? Please watch the video till the end, it is quite comprehensive, bit technical at few places, so concentrate as well, but after watching this video, we are confident, you don't have to watch any other video on this topic. One note here, lot of things discussed in this video applies to type 2 diabetes, the type of diabetes the most people commonly have. Let's get started. To understand things discussed in this video, we strongly suggest you to first look at our video on nutrition basics, and then come back, the link of which is provided in the description. Carbohydrate, protein and fats are the macronutrients in our diet. We will discuss each one by one in regard to diabetes. Let's start with carbohydrate. Note carbohydrates are also called carbs in short. Realize whether it's ice cream, coke, cookies, fruits, vegetables or grains, all are carbohydrates. However the type of carbohydrate they contain are different. Carbohydrate can be divided into mainly two types. Simple carbohydrates, as the name suggests, are quickly broken down by the digestive system, while it takes some time for complex carbohydrate to be broken down. How quickly or slowly foods are broken down plays a very important role in diabetes. Let me repeat that, how quickly or slowly foods are broken down plays a very important role in diabetes. The building blocks of carbohydrate is, or in other words, carbohydrate is made up of million small units called saccharides. No three common saccharides found in food are glucose, fructose, and galactose. Glucose is also commonly referred as sugar. When someone says blood sugar level, it actually means the level of glucose in blood. Now don't confuse the word sugar here with table sugar. Though table sugar is also later broken down into glucose and fructose. Here we are omitting the discussion of fructose as it does not directly raise the level of glucose in blood. However fructose can be very damaging to health in different way, and its consumption must be limited as much as possible. Look for our future video on fructose. So why are we focusing only on glucose? Because understand this very clearly glucose is the only thing, yes it is the only thing, that is directly the cause of diabetes. In fact, the meaning of diabetes is, to have high level of glucose in blood. The managing diabetes means, the managing the level of glucose in blood. If that's the case, you might ask why not absolutely avoid food that contains glucose altogether? Again, to answer this question in few lines is not possible, at this point, let's just assume that we will need to take food that contains glucose. Next thing you need to understand while talking diabetes is the role of insulin. Let's say you had pasta. Though pasta also have nutrients other than carbohydrate, but as mentioned above, let's first discuss just about carbohydrate. The digestive system will break carbohydrate found in pasta into its constituent parts called saccharides. Now from the digestive system, these saccharides will reach the bloodstream. The type of saccharides found in pasta is mostly glucose. Probably you know, glucose is the main source of energy in our body. From the bloodstream, glucose has to reach every cell that require energy. Let's say cells in our muscle tissue require energy. However glucose just cannot enter into a cell, you can think, a door to enter a cell is closed. This is where the role of insulin comes. Just beneath the liver, there is a part called pancreas in the human body. It produces hormone called insulin. Insulin reaches to cells and now to simplify things, you can think, insulin knocking on the door of cells and cells opening the door through which glucose can enter inside cells.
Equipped with these knowledge, let's look at why certain type of food is bad. Let's take an example of ice cream. As it is mostly simple carbohydrates, it takes very little time for our digestive system to break simple carbs found in ice cream to its constituent part saccharide, which is mostly glucose. So very soon we will have lots of glucose in blood. Having lots of glucose in blood is very bad for health for a whole host of reasons. But the body is intelligent enough, it tries to reduce the amount of glucose in blood. The level of glucose in blood will drop if they can be sent to different cells of our body. However as we discussed above, glucose cannot enter inside cell if insulin is not present. Hence to reduce level of glucose, pancreas has to produce large amount of insulin. Obviously this puts stress on pancreas and bad for it. After taking ice cream, after few minutes let's say you also took cake. Just like ice cream, cake is also full of simple carbs. Hence if you eat it, that will also result in large amount of glucose in blood. Now to reduce the level of glucose, pancreas which as few minutes ago had pumped out lot of insulin, again need to pump out more of them. Now things could get more worse here. If you are diabetic, cells do not respond well to insulin. Even in a healthy individual, cells which has just received lot of insulin few minutes before, seeing more insulin coming their way, cells may respond less to this new flow of insulin. We see this thing happening in our real life. Parent often pointing fingers and shouting at child too much, too often. Child starts to care less and becomes less responsive. Coming back to our topic, now since cells did not respond well to the second flow of insulin, the level of glucose in blood remains high. This is also called insulin insensitivity or insulin resistance. Now seeing this, pancreas might pump out more insulin even though it is very tired from already pumping out two rounds of insulin in a very short duration. This kind of repeatedly forcing pancreas to produce more and more insulin in quick successions could ultimately damage pancreas itself. Now let's see what happens if you have complex carbohydrate. In case of complex carbohydrate, the digestive system cannot break all of them at once. So only some carbohydrate will be broken and only some glucose will reach the bloodstream. Since there is only small amount of glucose in bloodstream, Pancreas without any stress can produce required amount of insulin. After some time, the digestive system will have broken down some more carbohydrate, and some more glucose will reach the bloodstream. Just like before, pancreas without any stress produces the required amount insulin, and the cycle continues and everything goes smoothly. So the main thing is, if pancreas has to produce a small amount of insulin from time to time, that's not a problem. The problem is only when pancreas has to produce too large amount of insulin at too little gap. For example, if you have to run 10 kilometers in one hour, probably that's not a problem. The problem is only when you have to run 10 kilometers in 10 minutes. Here we have to add one more thing to our discussion, fiber. It is best to eat grains and vegetables in their natural state or in unrefined or unprocessed form, not in refined and processed form. Foods in their natural state contains lots of fiber. Fiber is something which our digestive system cannot break. Hence if food contains lot of fiber, the process of breaking down food really slows down. As a result, glucose will only end up bit by bit in the bloodstream, which pancreas and cells can perfectly handle without any undue pressure. Now let's discuss the concept of glycemic index. It is a numerical value given to foods in the range of 0 to 100, depending upon how quickly they are broken down and raises blood sugar level. As you can see from the graph, higher the glycemic index, it means the more quickly it raises the blood sugar level. Foods having glycemic index of 55 or lower is considered low. 
Foods having in the range of 56 to 69 is considered medium while those having above 75 is considered high. Where can you find glycemic index of all kinds of food? One of the most comprehensive and authentic website is As we said three macronutrients in food are carbohydrate, protein and fats. Now what about protein and fat? Protein and fat, in normal circumstances, are not broken down into glucose. Hence they don't need insulin, and has no role in raising glucose level and developing diabetes under normal circumstances. Analyzing all the information presented so far, the formula you need to follow is According to this formula, for glucose load on your body to be less, if one parameter is high, then you have to keep other parameters low. For example, you if eat foods like ice cream which gets quickly broken down, meaning its GI will be high, then it means you cannot eat it too much and in quick succession. On the other hand, if eat food like brown rice, which is slowly broken down, meaning its GI will be low, you can have in large quantity but you must not eat it at too short interval. Now some general guidelines. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please don't forget to hit the like button and also subscribe the channel.